that was tiring. It's not like you had to do any work, though. Give her a break, man. She was getting interrogated left and right. She handled herself the best she could. As expected, princess. Since you're exhausted, why not head to bed? We can clean up. Ugh. Hush, Sam. Are you guys sure? Positive. It shouldn't take long. Ho ho ho! It didn't take long to find you little shits after all. I felt the heart shudder run down my spine. The voice from my dreams echoed through the air into my ear. I looked around, panicked, alongside the incubi. James placed a hand on my shoulder, trying to remain calm. Don't worry. No one will hurt you. Are you sure? Are you really sure? All of us shot our heads towards the doors, finally pinning down the direction of the voice. The doors quickly swung open, revealing a sight I would have never expected to see. Skin red as blood, eyes black and gold piercing into mine, roughed up clothes and a pistol in hand. I saw a monster. I covered my mouth to not scream at sight. Dry blood covered the bandana around his neck as he smoked at me and the boys around me. Beside the red-skinned man was a similar-looking woman in matching thug-like clothes. Aw, oh, what's the matter, boys? You really didn't think I wouldn't find you, did you? I hoped you would, you piece of- All of a sudden, the man raised his gun at Sam's face and instantly pulled the trigger. We all gasped in shock, instantly expecting to see a bullet run through Sam's face, but... What the fuck? Wh what? What should have been a headshot ended with a loud but empty blank shot. The pistol echoed its empty shots as the man grew more and more pissed, pulling the trigger over and over again in aggravation. Lucky for my ears, it became quieter after his first shot. Why the fuck won't you work? This place is protected. What did you say, shrimp? This place has a seal, protecting it from hellborn magic. What the fuck is that supposed to mean? The man growled and threw his gun at Sam, who was able to dodge it in time. The pistol bounced off the wall a couple of times before sliding further away, hitting the wall with a final stop. As he stopped moving, the gun faded into black veins but disappeared into the air. The previous owner had this place protected by magic, Malix. Malix, that was his name? His existence resonated in my memory from the dream I had. However, I looked to Matthew in the same confusion as Malix did. This place is protected by magic? <laughs> It would seem that your grandfather had some sort of protective barrier around this house. From the looks of it, it only disables hellborn magic. Max's face grew to that of extreme anger, his fists tightening as he was crushing a stress ball. And what's stopping me from dragging your asses out and shooting you then? Out of pure instinct, I stepped forward and placed myself between Malix and the boys. With no power, Malix wasn't going to fight. I took the chance to stand up to him and started being powerless like I was in the dream. Malik stared wide at my words. I could feel the boys do the same from behind me. Malik and smirked and leaned in nose to nose with me. And just who the fuck are you? It's none of your you concern. You got a big mouth, nameless bitch. You best be careful who you speak to. All of a sudden, I felt a hand grip my hair and pull it back, forcing me to cry out. Sir, but Malik's, his eyes born to mine as he cackled in my face. Hey! Let her go! Sam! Eric! Within me a second, Sam had punched Malik squarely in the jaw, forcing him to let, um, let my hair go. As I fell back, Eric caught me in his arms, gently pulling me away from Malik and back in their group. <sighs> Come on, Sam! You and me! Right here! Let's go! Come on, asswipe! However, before both could fight, the woman stepped forward and placed a firm grip on, my, on Malik's shoulder. That's enough, Malix. What? Who do you think you're speaking to, woman? The girl who's going to help you kill them. Just not now. Not now? I said that the girl spoke down at Malik. She looked the same, just like a pure evil. However, she seemed to be concerned for Malik or for me. There's five of them and two of us. Even if we come back with the gang, they can have the place surrounded by human police. That's true. Wait, you guys actually fear human police. That's good to know. Human police, devils are afraid of. Then, we shoot everyone! 
Think! If we shoot everyone, we'll be hunted. And it'll be a matter of time before makeshift paladins come and try to exercise us. The two growled at each other. If they could have used their magic, I could sense the fire would glow from under their teeth. Malik scrunched and glared at the boys. He pointed at James, wanting so badly to use his finger like a knife. <laughs> Just wait, pretty boys. We'll get you and fuck you up real good. <laughs> then Malik turned to me, moving his finger to point directly between my eyes. And don't think you're safe. <laughs> Step outside. I dare you. <laughs> With that, Malix and the woman walked out of the mansion. The doors closed behind them, leaving the boys and I alone once again. I felt my leaves give out from under me, forcing the boys to quickly turn to catch me. Whoa, whoa! Are you alright? Yeah, why was he here? He's been closely tracking us. Our blood trail from the forest must have led him here. <sighs> We should have stopped him and finished it here. For once, Matthew, I agree with you. I set up my eyes, feeling the goosebumps Malik left behind them. I couldn't stop myself from shivering in fear of his words. Malik's was he a demon? That son of a bitch is not a demon. He's a devil. A devil, there's a difference? Yes. Demons come from a different plane of existence called the Abyssal Plains. Devils, however, come from one of the seven circles of a place humans know. As hell. Despite us not being human, we are very different creatures. We actually have brains, for one. Devils always like to cause trouble and try to kill or torture others for their own enjoyment. Demons, like us, know when to use our powers and when not to. We're not stupid. Devils follow orders from higher-ups in their order, and their power only comes from their connection to hell. Demons all have free wills and don't rely on where they came from to use their powers. This was all so confusing. Demons and devils and magic all existed. And I'm in the middle of it. What do we do? You're safe. You've been protected as well. Huh? What Damien's saying is that the magic that protects this place also protects you. Your grandfather must have cast it when you last saw him or something of that nature. We can sense its aura around your body. I can't believe my ears. It was the third day of surprise and this one took the cake. I felt my head spin again. What did I get myself into? Miss, please don't worry. We'll find a way to train ourselves and become stronger to finally finish this feud. <sighs> I'm gonna kick his ass right now! Until then, we'll protect you as much as we can. If Malix comes back, we'll be here for you. Um, what about going inside? Won't he... Like we said, you have a protection spell on you. Even if Malix attacks you, he won't be able to use his magic on you. He'd be just like any other human you can fight back against. Didn't you say you knew Taekwondo? Well, yeah. I felt somewhat relieved that I was mostly safe from Malik. Still, I couldn't help but feel nervous and apprehensive at the future. The boys were safe here to train and become stronger, but what if Malik stayed the same? Even more so, I was so lost in how my grandfather knew about magic, I had to find out. At least I had time. I went to bed that night feeling nervous despite the words of the incubi i felt like a target to something i'd never been able to explain or prove magic devils demons how did all this even happen should i really meddle with the situation they're only staying until after they defeat malix that's right they said they'd only stay until after they defeated malix after that my life would go back to normal temporary insanity as k would say question is would i want them to leave if my life went back to normal, then I'd have to care for the house all on my own. i get to focus on my life instead of being distracted by the boys. I'd have to... My life... Where was my life going anyway? I was under pressure from my parents, with only my friends and the boys to comfort me. Without the boys, I'd have no way to hide from my responsibilities. Uh, enough. Let's just sleep and deal with it tomorrow when it comes. Defeating my sense of thought, I forcibly... I forced myself to sleep, unsure of what tomorrow had planned for me. Hopefully, whatever the future had for me, I'd be ready for it. I promise to be with you forever. You're so important to me. I swear I'll give my life to you. Please, let me love you. I'll be by your side, always. I can't imagine living without you. I want to be with you. I love you. 
slowly opened my eyes, letting the voices of my dream echo in my head and forcing me awake. I opened my eyes before sitting up and looking at my clock. 7 a.m. Why am I up so early? I fell back onto the bed and closed my eyes, trying to go back to sleep. However, something kept me awake. Why? It's too early to even be alive. I gave up and sat up, staring at the fireplace across my bed. A sigh escaped between from my lips before I threw my legs over the side of the bed. What to do at 7 in the morning? Um, explore the house. I said it was a good idea to wander around the house. I never really explored it as much as a child, so there was bound to be new surprises. Come on, feet. Let's go on a venture. I stood next to my room, hoping that the boys were still asleep. I began to wander the halls on my end of the house, opening each door to find what room each door led to. Quickly, I found an old office, a desk, and a chair set by the far end as a large bookshelf of documents and memorabilia domed its nooks and crannies. There was a couple of pictures of me growing up, peeking from the shelves as I worked further into the room. I don't believe I've been in here before. 